the Endo meeting on January 17th. Uh, we will not be seeing sprightly demos today uh, or sharing uh, sharing some uh, Endo demos, but Dan has prepared a demo that we'd like to get on the record for using the pet demon to interact with the Agoric chain. And then after that, we have procedural business. Um, so Dan, please dazzle us. All righty. Okay, so we had a Agoric internal hackathon, and I was seeing Agoric one addresses on the screen here and there, and even some form fields of the form. You know, type in this long random number, and I thought to myself, "There's got to be a better way. We should be using pet names." Sprightly has some pet names stuff. I wonder if it helps. Using Sprightly stuff directly on Agoric apps seems like a stretch. In the OCAP and discussions, we've talked about a CAFTP bridge. I've done some endo plugins for key management and Google Sheets and stuff. Why not the Agoric chains? Okay. Um, Mark, um, you're actually maybe my primary audience member today. Okay. All right. Because every once in a while, I assume smart wallet knowledge, and you remind me that that's not a good idea. So Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, that, so so um, you're saying that uh, I can... Um, Claim as a benefit my maintaining my ignorance on that. <laughs> right. <laughs> Until now, I hope. Anyway. All right. Okay. So uh, the sort of punchline is that we're going to deposit a dollar into the inner protocol reserve. And um, I have a nothing up my sleeves. For, you know, I can run the code as a demo also. Um, but Okay, so there's some again, though, agenda endo CLI set up. Um, you want to get it into your path, and it's on the endo branch. Uh, that's the version I used um, for the record. I use a thing called Durand. Um, so when I CD to this directory, there's a file that says, oh, by the way, set up your direct your environment this way. It's also happy, it's also handy to manage some secrets that we'll use later. Is everybody else getting good audio from Dan? Because I'm getting a choppy. I am. Huh. Okay. I can add a headset. I'll just spend 30 seconds doing that. The anticipation builds. Sometimes it helps if everybody turns off their uh, video, their camera. Yep. Sound check. Yeah. Sound check. Okay. All right. There's some endo CLI set up if you were to try to do this at home. All right. I also have a uh, make file cheat sheet of uh, so that makes me makes it easier for me to run things again, and it also records the dependencies between the various pizzas. Um, so if you type make, it'll tell you where your endo state is, and if you type make clean, it'll do an endo reset. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, this stuff expects there to be an Agoric blockchain running locally. Uh, this is the relic of good magic to get that to happen. If you have this file, in a, in a, uh, if you have this content in a file called Docker Compose YAML and you have Docker Compose installed, you can type Docker Compose up and you will have a blockchain running locally. All right. Um, all right. So the first endo plugin that I'm talking about is a thing called Cosmos Fetch. And it's basically network access. And uh, it has a couple of um, uh, it basically there's a, uh, a thing for doing uh, JSON RPC and a thing for basically doing a, 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 a get and then doing a JSON uh, parse JSON and a little bit of um, error handling. So you, the, this, there's a thing called, they called a light client daemon, the Cosmos world does. And it basically, you can just get from some path um, and decode the, the JSON that comes back. And then when they talk about R RPC, you can execute a JSON RPC request. And then there's a disconnect, which is a no op in this world. Okay, so that's the plugin that does uh, network access, and if I say make uh, fetch plugin, then it does 
uh, endo make unsafe, and we're going to call that Cosmos fetch. All right, and using that, we can ping the, the Agoric blockchain. Um, <clears throat> I've got a thing that runs confined that just says, okay, make such an endpoint or make two such endpoints and give me them back. Uh, and there's the two endpoints. And then if we uh, eval um, get JSON at slash node info and we pick out the node info field, we get something like this. And I can do that here. Oh. Uh, clean. Okay. Mark, is it reasonably clear what happened there? Apologies. I, I muted Mark. Uh, that is... I pretty sure that the clipping was feedback, but Mark, please unmute, sorry. Uh, hi, uh, my answer was uh, 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 no, it wasn't clear. I'm just not not through any fault of yours, just I'm not absorbing fast enough this morning. Okay, and I know to slow down a little bit, that's good. Okay. All right, so we will slow down a little bit. Um, was this part about running the code, a certain amount of code unconfined and getting something that we have a pet name for. Is that clear? You're muted again. No. Oh. No, I'm not two, muted. Um, you have two agents. Can you hear me? Oh, I see. I see, you have two of you, okay. Ah, okay. Um, uh, so uh, I am. I think you're assuming that I'm more familiar with the pet demon than I am. That's fine. Um, now I'm learning so, more. <laughs> okay. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm simultaneously ignorant of the pet demon and of the wallet. So that's I'm in a bad. Um, okay. I'm, but. Um, okay. So uh, I'll go slightly slower and just go here. So this is a function called make and you you pass in some powers which it happens to not use and it gives okay. you back a thing with two methods on it and okay. um it used global this dot fetch so okay it needs to run unconfined got it okay got it and by unconfined just to make, make sure i'm following by unconfined you mean it runs in the start compartment yeah Okay. It's without any special stuff other than uh, endo in it. And what it what it gives you back is a far object with two methods. Okay. And that gets associated with this pet name. Okay. It's perhaps okay. It's perhaps worth noting also that the dash dash unsafe means it's running on bare node. It is running inside of a worker, not in the daemon. So, uh, oh. so any interaction with this is going to occur over cap TP. Okay. All right. So we have our first plug in there. So now I can use code that's that does not need to be unconfined. It's just normal confined code. Okay. And um, I invoke it using endo make and that code there. Um, and minus p cosmos fetch causes the thing that we did in the previous step to show up here at, at as the primary argument. So, right. so what does minus P mean? Powers? Yeah. That, I forget what P is short for. Yeah, that's short for powers. Okay. So in this case, in the first case, I just ignored the powers argument. In this case, I'm going to expect something there. Ah, oh, okay. All right, and it's just gonna, we had those two methods, we're gonna invoke them, and we're gonna give you back a record of the results. Okay. And here's the record. All right. Okay, and good, good. This, this, is the, this is the speed that I'm able to process, good. Good. Okay, and then um, uh, this Cosmos fetch thing gives you back something with a get JSON method. 
So I'm going to just use the endo eval so I can just freeform type some JavaScript and get it evaluated. I'm going to use the get JSON method to get the slash node info. Um, so this is like doing curl, right? Curl of, of <laughs> okay. this slash that, getting back some JSON, picking out the node info thing. And, I see. Okay. And it puts like that. Okay. Okay. All right. So now we can ping the Agoric chain. All right. Uh, so now one of the part of the URL space in there is this thing called vStorage. And the, the URLs have two path components. One of them is kind. Kind can be children or data. And then path is a dot separated path. All right. And so the, the dot separated paths are things like publish dot agoric names dot brand. Okay. All right. Um, so to get the children of published dot agoric names using endo, we can endo eval slash agoric, you know, go get the JSON at agoric uh, v storage children of published dot agoric names. And what comes back is this rec, this stuff here. All right. And it, that's, that was, you know, that, we got a list of some names. That's, that's okay. And then what if we get the data, instead of doing a, a children query, we do a data for published.agoric.brand. Well, now, so what the heck is all that? Well, if we JSON parse it a couple times for reasons that I won't go into, Oof. we get something familiar. Okay. Can you go into that a couple of <laughs> just a little? Okay. Um, so the V storage stuff can only store strings. So when we have cap data, we have to stringify it. And then it can store like a history of strings throughout the blockchain. Got it. And still, that's why there's a value zero. So you can sort of get the latest one and it has a block number and then you can say, okay, what happened before that block number? What happened before that block number? What happened? Um, so. Okay. And, and, and just to, to be clear, what we're looking at is um, the result of a JSON parse, but not the result of a small caps on Marshall. That's correct. And we are seeing the small caps encoding in the, uh, JSON parsed data. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. So there's an outer JSON envelope that is responsible for making it possible to traverse the chain's history, and an inner envelope, which is our um, our marshalling format. Okay. Right. And then within that, the outer on the outer envelope is is the slot dereferencing, and uh, and uh, the body is yet another layer. Okay. But cap, you know, if you're in, in this meeting, you're likely to have seen cap data before. All right. Um, so this smart wallet plugin has a whole bunch of things, but it, uh, a big part of it is that it understands these unmarshalling conventions. And so if we invoke the smart wallet plugin and we call it client client maker, because that's what it really is. Um, and it's sort of got two kinds of clients. Uh, if we go all the way back to the top here, there's two main things that we can do here. We can do these rich V storage queries, and we can sign and broadcast offers. And so, all everything I'm talking about so far is in the in the rich V storage query thing. And so, we're going to get a client that really knows how to do those those rich um, queries. Um, so, the client maker I have renamed it Factory just to confuse you. Here's the binding over here, Factory Client Maker. This is go use the pet name. Um, client maker, get the job, JavaScript object and bind it to the name factory for use in this evaluation. Then we're going to call make query tool, and I could show you the code for that over here, but I'm not going to. Um, Dan, Dan, your audio broke. Your audio broke up. Let, 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 let me see if I if I inferred correctly what you were what audio I missed. Uh, factory colon client maker says look up the pet name client maker and bind it to the lexical variable factory Bingo. for the eval. Okay, good. 
All right. And local is a short version, which means look up the local pet name and bind it to local. All right. So now we can evaluate this. So we, we are clearly going to need network access here. So we, we give it network access. And so if we use that query tool and query for publish dot agoric names dot brand, we get this unmarshaled stuff here with actual uh, synthesized brand objects. Okay. All right. Um, those arrays of pairs represent um, maps of names to values. You can use from M trees to turn it into a record. If the you know the scheme folks were here, they might not use from M trees a hundred times a day. So I was going to explain that. Um, so then you can just do brand dot atom and you get your your atom brand. Um, okay, that was a job. Uh, Dan, good question. Are, are you storing? Uh, like, uh, and at, at the first eval, I know eval e query tool that query did. Okay, so you're storing that as name brand graph. Yep, thanks for asking. That was off the screen. Brand graph, okay. Um, Okay, so the array of pairs are the entries of a name hub, which is an inter interface similar to map, but instead of get, has it has an iterative lookup method. Okay. So um, using that query tool, you can say lookup agoric names brand Adam, and it'll do iterative version of it, which is the same as, you know, e uh, lookup AB is the same as lookup A and then lookup B. Good. Now, so is, it after, is it is it when you say it's the same, uh, just the mechanics of it is that the um, uh, lookup A, lookup B, it would be the request. Hmm. Sends the message lookup A, uh, and then it would be the sending node that sends the message lookup B to the promise for the result of the first. Whereas in the iterative form, there's one message that's sent, and then it's the name hub that sends the next that sends the next lookup uh down the line correct uh yes um but in this case the comp the computation is kind of split um what gets um saved in v storage is this array of entries so i'm sort of kind of faking the the name hub api based on this array of entries that i've got here Am I making any sense? But all you, all the stuff you said about promises and messages is true still, I think. Sure. So the, um, oh, I see. The query tool is the thing that's in the role of name hub. Got it. Right. Okay. And it's and I think it's worth noting at this time that in, a, in my working copy, you would, instead of being able to, instead of doing this eval uh, to do the lookups, you'll be able to just use dot delimited pet name paths because it respects the lookup method as a protocol. Oh, you could just do query tool dot agoric names dot brand dot atom. Yeah. You'd be able to do like endo show right query tool dot agoric names dot brand dot atom. Yeah. Wow. Good. No, it, Good. So, so to the right of the colon, it's not just a pet name, it's a pet name path. It will be, yes. Okay. All right. And and by the way for the, in case the sprightly audience watches the recording, this name hub stuff is where, as the pivot point where I hope to get interrupt between Agoric and sprightly, the name hub API. Good. Good. Uh, that's the right, that's the right first choice. Yeah. That's the most important one. All right. So um, certain amount of this stuff was, you know, how the sausage is made is on the Agoric end. But this name hub lookup stuff is the API that I'm, I'm really interested in. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Michael is currently looking at the name hub API. So you um, might want to coordinate with him to make sure you're you're um, in sync. Yeah. I I want to tell me when it changes kind of thing that I, I that it has very poorly right now. Anyway. 
All right, and reverse look up. Okay, um, so there's also um, our smart wallet offer client stuff works similarly. When you make an offer, you give a bunch of information that ends up into the Zoe offer API. And the way you give things like brands is you give these object references that get serialized and you know uh, using Marshall and such like that. Um, so I can make what's called a wallet kit if I supply the 24 words. Uh, and I have a separate key management solution that I'm not talking about today. And it needs both styles of network access for various reasons. Uh, for looking stuff up, it uses the light client daemon. And then for sending uh, protobuf messages, it uses the RPC thing, whatever. Um, and it needs network access. Uh, and it needs the client maker thing. And we're going to call the result uh, Alice's wallet kit. And it comes up with three objects. One is a query tool, just like that. Um, it's actually a query tool whose whose uh, Marshall context is specific to Alice. Because you sort of have to remember the object identities across invocations and stuff. And the I got sort of lucky with the endo lifetime stuff. It all just kind of works. Um, Uh, so I'm I'm not following. Explain to explain what the hazard is. Where where uh, it might not work, or or in so, what way you're lucky. So you fetch a brand, and then you reset the demon, and then you go and send an offer that kind of refers to that brand. Okay. Well, Endo just so happens to have a persistent mo persistence model where it has to go recompute the brand. Does that make sense? No, not yet. Uh, what do you mean recompute? Oh, this, imagine restarting your computer. It remembers the pet names. Okay. Uh, and it, rem and it remembers how to get that brand. Okay. This is the okay. This is the pet demon formula stuff. Right. And where did the formula and and where did the formula come from that it's remembering? Well, here's one of the formulas, for example. Okay. Okay. And other formulas are for make and, you know, it, whenever you tell it to run some code, it squirrels away the code and stuff like that. Okay. Um, so, yeah, you can have these sort of identity disconnect things where you're like, I gave you the brand. Why don't you recognize it? Because <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you, you know, you looked it up twice and can computed, synthesize two different objects. But um, after a little bit, after realizing that I needed a query tool for Alice and a query tool for Bob, and they each have separate brains, right? Mm -hmm. um, then it all made sense. Okay, and the smart wallet is the thing that knows how to send offers. And then there's this transaction thing for making lower level transactions if you happen to be in the mood for that. I'm, I don't have any use for that lately. Um, there's this stuff about how I would have liked more to run more of this code um, confined, but blah, blah, blah. And then uh, each offer needs a fresh ID. I could have just used serial numbers. I happen to mix the clock in. I think that's kind of boring. I'm going to skip over that. Is there something quick you can say about the difficulty of getting protobuf libraries to run on conf run confined? Let me see if I can remember a little bit. Uh, endo discussion. Was this about it using eval internally? Yes, that was a that was part of the problem. Um, so it's just sort of you know CES compatibility, or uh, you know change eval to parentheses around it eval or or no eval or something, and then there was uh, something about global this and. Uh, okay, it sounds like there's nothing fundamental here. It's just right. Okay, shaving off barnacles. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, oh, so then the other thing is I would have liked to separate the signing code from a lot of the other code, but we we don't have byte string support in Endo Marshall. Okay. So I had to jam two things into the same worker when I didn't really want to. And by byte string, you mean uh, what in OCAPN we're calling byte array, just a binary 
Yeah. Okay. I would have liked to say sign these bytes. Okay. Okay, so then I've got this little thing that comes up with fresh IDs of the form bid 420, 420.48.4.5, whatever. Happens to use the clock, should could have used just serial numbers. And then to actually send money to the reserve, I have a make file thing. And it happens to use uh, this um, guest stuff that I don't really want to talk about too much stuff. Um, but I basically give it the wallet kit and the ability to make fresh trade IDs. And I say run this uh, reserve code unconfined, no, confined, sorry, run the reserve code in the normal way, confined. I give it two arguments and Alice's powers and it does a bunch of stuff and it spits out um, the fact, you know, num one satisfied, you might recognize from the Zoe API, some payouts, that's an amount there. It got deleted by the uh, node uh, console stuff. And it gives you the transaction block height and transaction hash in case you want to do whatever with that. Uh, we can look at the actual reserve code, which I think I'm happy is kind of straightforward. So the code starts by turning the the command line arguments into a brand and a value uh, record where we look up the IST argument in the Agoric names brand to find the brand. So, oh, yeah. So that's the... Um, look up a Gork names brand and then the brand brand name is the command line argument. And we look up wallet in our pet name store um, to find our our thing that has a vStorage query client. So that allows us to, to get a brand object. And so now we've got this uh, amount thing here. You'll forgive me for not importing ERTP uh, uh, amount math make. Um, and then it allocates a fresh ID. Um, and makes an offer spec with a few details that are not all that interesting. And then it uh, executes the offer, which makes does a bunch of data structure mangling and signs the thing and executes it and sends it over and then pulls the blockchain for the result and then shows you the, the, the info. I know we're all with video and audio off, but I believe that the crowd has risen and is cheering loudly. <laughs> so the, the premise here is that you could have things that watch the chain and go, oh, the market conditions are good. I will execute this kind of trade or, you know, that kind of stuff. Interact, interact with Google spreadsheets in a, in a way that you can understand how the authorities flow and, and what's confined where and stuff. I like it. And this is in the playground. It is. Yeah, this is this is in a PR to the playground. And my uh and 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 uh Dan has taken on the the first commits to the playground where there are not any rules yet. So uh, <laughs> we're uh, I had to put up some playground equipment here. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um and yeah, and we and we can riff on that as we go forward. That uh, my intention is for it to be more fun and less. <laughs> there, there isn't a there isn't a point in a high degree of rigor in the playground, um, since the thing that it is building on top of is moving rapidly, and everything will constantly be breaking. It's pretty fun to play there currently, though. Yeah, yeah. awesome. Yeah, no, this is awesome, Dan. Uh... I know I've been kind of looking forward to this for a bit, but it really does get me excited to see uh, yeah, just for the future of secure uh, communication between like the NOD and or uh, yeah, whatever type of programming environment and yeah, the Agora blockchain and vice versa. Yeah, and then the next step, I suppose, among the many possible next steps, would be to go and have the same, and and create an entry in the playground for a, a moddable device, and then. <laughs> oh yes! Oh yes! And then connect. I, the... might I might have to do that now that you've planted that idea in my brain. 
<laughs> that was one of the first things I did with hardened JavaScript. Iterated do, prisoners. Do we have some? Up. Do we have some multiple devices on hand? I do. I have. What do one. you got? I have a model three or model. I don't know. It has a display and and a Wi-Fi or something. <laughs> I can't remember. No, oh, I can. I can show it to you. Chris is holding the model four there. I see. Yeah, he's got he's got the brain implant. <laughs> right. Well, I'm. You know, it's invisible unless it's attached to my brain. <laughs> So, so far, we've, I mean, obviously, we're running the whole Agoric stack on XS, but so far, we haven't actually run much of the Agoric stack on a modable, or any, as far as I know, on a modable device running XS. That's right. Is that cool? Okay. That's right. And so, so among the among the, the, the short list of challenges <laughs> are uh, really just getting CAPTP running over a TCP or or TLS connections to a moddable device with that's been pre-programmed with some paper. I was going to say, how much of the stack are you talking about? It comes with a huge part of it. it comes with compartments for crying out loud. Yeah, there's that. Um, One part would be um, if you wanted it to, if you wanted the light bulb to remember its state, uh, then you might, and you wanted it to support um, delegation, You it might be valuable if it had uh, orthogonal persistence. So now are you doing message replay on XS, even though we use XS to snapshots? <laughs> Inquiring minds want to know. I mean, I, that's what I will probably eventually do if it comes to it. Yeah, Just, the, the, that is a, that is, a lot. <laughs> the, um, I, like in order to get the first thing working on a audible device, all we need is CAPTP over TCP. And then we can have it talking to a demon or receiving messages from a demon or pulling or pushing one or the other, whatever works. Um, and that's, that's pretty minimal. Uh, there, there might be some challenges in interacting with the underlying implementation of Harden, but I don't, ex I mean, I don't expect them to be on. A, a, there to be a great deal there. Um, it's also possible that, that the snapshotting code is like 10 times as big as anything that will fit on a embedded device. Right. Yeah. And, and, uh, yeah. And, and, and there would have, we'd have to do some stuff to actually make the snapshot run. Um, because snapshots are currently only integrated with the X snap binary. Um, I don't know what that looks like for getting it to run on a moddable device. Well, there's those, they do have C module stuff that you can ship to a, to a, I know how that works. Interesting. Yeah, I could, I could definitely see a moddable device starting from its ROM and then whenever it goes to sleep, writing its active, uh, its active state back into RAM or, or a solid state if it had any. If the device had some solid state and then just recycle every time it turn when every time it wakes up that's interesting oh okay I, i'm gonna share a, a kind of crazy idea right there for um i i have a neighbor whose expertise is in a new kind of semiconductor called a memristor have, have yeah. you heard of it <laughs> uh good. interesting yeah as a as a mechanism for orthogonal persistence i think it might be uniquely suited because it's um it, no no memory to to persistent state so it might be uniquely suited for basically storing power state today i learned yeah um, yeah, and I and and to Dan's point in chat, I, I am proposing that a pet demon running somewhere is uh, is a great way to is 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 a is a, a great potential platform for a IoT hub. Uh, but yeah, all right, cool, great demo, Dan. Thank you very much. Um, I'll I will socialize this with the folks who weren't able to be here, and um, uh, yeah. That leaves us with some procedural business and um
ZB had a topic. That's true. Thank you. Bye. All right. So real quick, uh, boring thing down to earth very much. Uh, so we've recently had a situation <clears throat> where uh, it turned out that lockdown is not working uh, when uh, when we upgrade Chrome to a latest version uh, because of one additional change in the intrinsics. <clears throat> so I decided it would be nice to know ahead of time. So I try to try to create a smoke test. Uh, my initial intention was to set up with Chrome version Canary, but that does not support running on Linux. Uh, doesn't want to support the version of Windows available in GitLab CI, uh, sorry, GitHub Actions. Uh, and it would only install on Mac but then Puppeteer would not be able to uh, successfully connect to any Chrome version uh, in GitHub Actions uh, on a Mac machine. So I went back to Linux, installed the newest I could. So Chrome version dev uh, looks fresh enough. And I've set up uh, a short script that uh, takes an index HTML that happens to load uh, lockdown JS and then runs two tests. One is type of lockdown so that we know if lockdown even exists. So if everything loaded as expected, and then it calls lockdown and expects success as a result. Otherwise, we get the error message and this thing works. So uh, we can detect things. Now, the only thing blocking me from offering this for merging right away is that I wanted to avoid uh, adding Puppeteer core uh, to uh, the overall set of dependencies that get to install every time we run yarn in the endo repository. So I made a nested package JSON that is not being installed as one of the workspaces, uh, which works, but- I don't, know then... anything, I don't know anything, hold on. I don't know anything about nested package, Jason. Uh, okay, so <laughs> we have a setup in the repository where uh, every folder in packages uh, has a package JSON, and these uh, are installed as one workspace with uh, Yarn. So Yarn will hoist uh, most of the dependencies up and will install everything with a single uh, Yarn command. And I wanted to avoid uh, installing Puppeteer on everyone's local machines every time they uh, install the repository. So there's a separate package JSON in the smoke test folder instead of Puppeteer being added as a dev dependency to SES itself. Why didn't you make smoke? I mean, we're in a mono repo. Why didn't you make smoke test a a another package of the mono repo that depends on the SES package? Because then everyone and, who installs sets that endo would get puppeteer, and he doesn't want that. And puppeteer is heavy. It's Very. a burden. Do we don't? Oh, 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 oh. It's heavy. Puppeteer not, core is slightly smaller, but still a thirty megabyte dependency that we don't need for anything other than CI. I see. I see. You're you're saying that um, it's not that you're trying to avoid having sets depend on puppeteer. You're trying to avoid having normal endo use depend on puppeteer. Uh, yes, endo development daily. Uh, okay. does not need to depend on Puppeteer. Got it. So okay. this gets uh, installed only in this specific CI job. And the only negative outcome of that is that Linter is unhappy with uh, index.js uh, depending on Puppeteer. And I think I failed to disable that rule in here. Uh, so either this needs fixing or... I don't know, <laughs> some configuration. Would it make sense if you're trying to avoid having the mono repo depend on Puppeteer, uh, would it make sense to put smoke test into a separate repo? Um, 
I think it's just ESLint disable next line, isn't it? Yeah, I could do that. Uh, yeah, so uh, putting the smoke test outside oh, okay. uh, would complicate things slightly uh, in terms yeah. of uh, the test results being visible. So I've currently configured them to uh, run on push to master uh, and to run daily uh, okay. to also cover uh, updates to um, the Chromium dev branch. And uh, that should uh, send us notifications whenever it starts failing. Okay. Uh, okay. So here's a, here are a couple of things. Um, Cess integration test. The package is Cess-integration dash test. Depends on Puppeteer. So. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, I would not work too hard to avoid depending on Puppeteer. Uh, except that I would kind of, I, we, the SES integration test is very, very, very stale. Um, and also, in some cases, runs across purposes which are stated in variants. Um, it, it's confirming that SES continues to work with certain with a variety of bundler configurations, none of which do we actively encourage or, exp or, or support, but we test anyway. Um, and they're on very old versions of, of various bundlers. I, I would love to give that a similar treatment to what you're trying to do for spook test, um, basically to make it so it's a CI only thing that doesn't end train dependencies in the daily workflow since that's unnecessary. Um, the to that end, perhaps we can put smoke test and assess integration test in. Um, well, I I don't know what do, would it work at the top level or in a in a um, in a in a CI directory that's not participating in the packages. Uh, yeah, it would work. I mean, Linter would complain anyway. Okay. So what is the so the fact that that SES integration is already part of the mono repo and depends on Puppeteer? Um, I haven't noticed any obvious pain from that. What is the pain of depending on Puppeteer since we're already you know since we're whatever that pain is is something we're already experiencing. Yeah, your yarn and the first yarn install is going to be um, much slower. Uh, or a yarn install after nuking your node modules will be a little bit slow. Um, but yeah, it isn't a pain that we have noticed. And we're, and to be clear, we're dr dragging in all of Puppeteer. Uh, it would probably be good to drag in the same version of Puppeteer for both the integration test and the smoke test. That I'm not sure. It would be It would be bad to have two versions. Could it make sense for the smoke test to move into the SES integration package? Um, possibly, yeah. Um, likely after a, a noticeable refresh of what's in the existing integration tests. Um, yeah, well, in any case, we want this. Um, and let's uh, now find 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 us in Slack or Matrix, and let's figure out let's answer answer your final questions. So, does the smoke test now pass with the latest fix to the problem you found, or the problem that Frederick found? Um, yes, the the problems fixed in uh, Master, and uh, the test is passing. I. Uh, accidentally initially run it uh, without rebuilding uh, SAS locally. So my local copy was significantly older and it was failing. Great. I mean, failing correctly, correct? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, so to finish with an action point, I'm going to... Uh, 
wrap up the pull request and I'm waiting for comments on how we want to uh, how we want to resolve what's left or where we want this located. Um, any possibility that this generalizes to canaries of the other browsers? Yes. Yes, it should not be that difficult, although installing canaries of browsers uh, is generally difficult. I spent uh, like an hour setting up uh, the whole test and the rest of today trying to get uh, Chrome Canary to install in various ways and that did not succeed. So uh, I stuck with Chrome Dev. Uh, and it will be similarly difficult to get very fresh uh, nightlies of other browsers, but uh, should not be impossible. I, I mean, we can get some fresh versions of Firefox, definitely. Uh, and I'm not sure about WebKit, but WebKit doesn't yeah. release that often uh, into a new version of a browser. So just downloading headless WebKit uh, should be enough or at least some testing. Okay, great, great. All right, apart from that, I, I, I've been watching, Eric Marx has been getting involved in the project and has been doing some cleanup and documentation for CES um, internal to the module system, which is exciting. Nice to see the code getting tossed between another pair of hands. Uh, uh, and I, I owe Eric a review today before I start turning the crank to cut new releases. That's the plan for today. So, um, I'll, uh, and as for the sprightly demos, I'll reschedule with them and let you know when they're available. I think that's a meeting for the day. Yeah, great. Ciao. Thanks for the eyeballs on my demo. Oh, that's for sure. Take care. Thank you. Thanks. Cheers.